I'm reintroducing the Ariel, so named after the sprite that inhabits Prospero's Island in Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. Features include a body made of 1.6 ounces per square yard hexon from Dutchware, a suspension made entirely of 764 AM steel with precision spliced loops at the end to accept tips of spreader bars and also to accept a sewing bobbin. A channel sleeve through which the AM steel passes secured at the corners with four or five inches of uh, sewing that goes right through the channel sleeve and the AM steel. Two, count them two, built-in personal containment devices. Recessed spreader bars to bring the thread closer to your shoulders and a computer engineered design of the body so that the hammock remains flat beyond the spreader bars. A micro light strap, also powered by Dutch, that's a one inch Kevlar, lightweight, soft shackle. We have a suspension cord tied off in a loop uh, with a figure eight knot. This is 2.8 millimeter spider line, then with a loop interlock with the loop in the other end of the Kevlar cord. A 1.8 millimeter ridge line made by New England Ropes in Duran. Obligatory Dutchware fashion statement in the way of a micro beaner that secures the ridge line. A leave no trace, completely detachable bug net, making the total package from tree to tree, excluding spreader bars, of just 446 grams, which is less than a pound. At the tree, we have very lightweight cord, um, one inch Kevlar that I got from Dutch, um, and also some spider line. There are four feet or so of tree strap, and then five feet or so of spider line. At the apex of the suspension triangle, we have the two eye splices. Through that eye splice, we have Lark's headed a loop of spider line that we're gonna use for the suspension. We bring the suspension cord from the tree up through the loop and get it to the place where we want the tension. Then bring the cord down around, put a bite through the loop that's formed, and voila, we have what's called a Beckett hitch. This is an old hammocking knot, recently been uh, repopularized by Derek Hansen and Sergeant Rock and others on hammock forums. And I like it a lot because it holds and um, it's a knot. As people rediscovered the Beckett hitch, they tried various things. Could am steel be used as part of this? Uh, the consensus seemed to be no. Um, I can tell you I verified that empirically. That's actually why I went with spider line for both the loop and the suspension cord. It's got an abrasive cover, and so uh, that tends to grab in ways that uh, the am steel would slip. And so, so far, so good. Have also Lark's head through the ice splices. Um, a bit of cord that's going to serve as a ridge line. This is fairly sturdy cord. It's made by New England Ropes. Uh, it's called Enduron. It's uh, 1.8 millimeters. I'm often asked whether it's necessary to have a ridge line on a bridge hammock. Now, I like ridge lines. I use them to hang things off of. I use it to support bug nets, um, as we'll see. It's not rigorously necessary to have a ridge line, but you have to understand that the lay that you get in a bridge hammock depends on how far apart you have pulled the ends of the hammock, which really comes down to the angle of the suspension to the tree. When it's tight, then the middle will be taut and you'll have lots of support in the middle. When it's loose, the middle will be loose, and you'll have less support in the middle. So you can set the sag that you want, or the lift that you want, by setting the length of the ridge line appropriately. You should be able to see here that the ridge line now is straight, if not taut, but what'll happen as we load the hammock, there is not much tension on this, as we load the hammock, the ridge line will droop. Now when we get inside the hammock and flatten things out, it will come up a little bit, but as you load the hammock, the ends come together a little bit more, varies from an inch to two inches, and so the way to set the ridge line is to get the sag you want without the ridge line on, tightening at the ends, and once you're comfortable there, then put the ridge line on and so that it's straight and a little bit taut, and then shorten it by an inch or two, and you're ready to go. I've got a small whoopee sling at the end of the ridge line uh, to make it adjustable. One of the reasons for that is when I detach the ridge line when the hammock's under load, it's easier if I can loosen things up before I try to get it out of the clip, which means that if I'm changing it, that I wanna be able to set it back to the setting that best suits me. So the way I mark that is I put a little thread loop in this cord right here so that I know that when I set the loop so that that thread mark is right there, 
then uh, I, have the, I have the length that I want. When I lengthen the whoopee sling to loosen things up, then the thread is not going to go inside of the cord. That's a surefire way then of setting the length by aligning it with that cord. These bobbins at the corner turn out to be perfect for attaching the ends of a partial length uh, underquilt. I have here my almost all Cuban underquilt, like very much, good for the shoulder seasons. It has um, shock cord with loops at the end. I just loop the loops over the bobbins. Because the ends of the spreader bar are a little longer than five feet, and we have this shock cord that pre creates tension, which means that when it's hung, the, uh, the underquilt is brought up tension against the body. And that's all there is to it. You can have a nice, toasty, warm sleep in those shoulder seasons. The key to a completely detachable bug net that doesn't leave behind Velcro or half of a zipper is to use magnets. So I found these little wonders at Hobby Lobby. They weigh one gram each. They are a quarter of an inch apart. Create a little tab made of grow grain. Make a pocket at both ends. Put magnets with opposite polarities, opposite each other, come together like so. Sew those tabs into an edge made of sil nylon, and then can take the magnets, put it over the edge of the hammock, and have them attached. See that attached here, and here, and here, and then can pull with a little tension, and that creates a seal of this edge on the edge of the hammock. So the net seals along the side, up past the spreader bar, along the end cap, and down along this side. There are 12 such of these tabs, four on each side and then four at the back. So we have the bug net here. To start off, we're gonna put it in its anchor points. So the anchor points start with where they attach to the spreader bar. So we have here a little hole that's burned to admit the tip of the spreader bar. And just a matter of putting that through. And then on the far side, we have what's essentially a, a buttonhole. Now with the anchors, we uh, uh, attach the bug net at the corners. We have a magnet here and magnets here. They too tend, tend to get a little clumped together. And there is material on the inside to make a seal on the inside. The bug net is suspended from the ridge line with some doubled over shock cord, have mitten hooks at either end. The doubled over shock cord passes inside of the bug net, which leaves a place where I can hang a headlamp, things like that. Uh, the shock cord is good because it allows some flexibility. We have a loop here to allow for some um, tension setting and position the top piece wherever it is that we want. Uh, the weight of the bug net, uh, I think, comes in at about three and a half ounces. The main hammock body comes in at 295 grams. Each of the strap suspension cord pairs comes in at 26 grams. And the bug net itself comes in at 102 grams for a total of 446 grams which is 15 and 3 quarters ounces.